today I'm going to talk about how you can prepare scans from Ferrocene so that you can export them into Ferrozone 3D. So what I have on my screen at the moment are three scans. So you can see right here, I've got three scans and they've already been registered. And this is an underground um, garage type of thing. So if I just turn around to see that there's a couple other scans in this direction, but nothing sort of further out there. And if I move into a position above the scan, you'll see that I've got this corner that's been uh, scanned quite well, but nothing further out here. So uh, there's a couple of things that we can do to uh, just limit the amount of data that we need to export. I mean, you could, of course, export just everything if you need it. Um, but I find that uh, when going into Ferrozone 3D, it's best to just bring in what it is that you need. So um, I'm going to say, let's say I just need this corner that's over here. OK, so um, what can I do to limit that or to limit the amount of data? And um, I guess I'll say first that, you know, limiting, limiting the amount of data and improving the uh, scans for Ferrozone 3D is obviously better just from a performance standpoint and just making your life easier so you don't have a lot of data that's extraneous. Um, just as an example here, if I, if we, this is underground, but let's say I was uh, scanning above ground and there's a window. Um, if I was only interested in the room or something like that and the laser or scanner shoots through the window and gets something that's very far away, um, the position of the scans in Ferrozone 3D and may have very large coordinates. So what I want to do is limit the amount of data that gets out there. So for example, all this data that's out at the edge here of the parking lot and stuff, I, I don't need that. So I just want to limit the working area inside of Ferrozone 3D just to this corner. So the first thing I could do um, is, let me bring this up sort of from a top-down view, is that I can just delete uh, the, the points that I don't need. So if you know, I'm in a more or less top-down view, you can also use the shortcuts here to get to the top. Okay, and there's a select tools that are up here. So I'm going to select polygon and I am just going to go and create a little oh, a rectangular shape like this. And to finish it off, I'm going to double click. Okay, so it's selected now all the points above and below. So if I want to delete from here, all I have to do is right click selection. Now I can invert the selection. So if I invert, I've now selected everything else that's outside of the area that I want and I can right click go selection and delete points if I click on that everything disappears I'm not going to do that now just because I'm going to save it for something else now what else could we do well there are filter tools in the scene and that's something else that we can uh, do if I go back to the processing tab and go process scans now I've processed these ones uh, but I'm going to select all the scans configure processing and you'll see here that I have a number of filters well First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck skip fully processed scans because they've already been uh, processed once. So I will go down to the filters here. I've got dark scan point. I'm going to uncheck all of these and anything else that's down here. So I'm going to uncheck find targets and I'm going to uncheck the automatic registration. So the only thing that I want here is going to be this distance filter. And I'm going to hit the little arrow beside settings and you'll see that I've got a filter here set to zero to 200 meters. Uh, this could be in feet or whatever you want. But let's say I only want to go out about, oh, I don't know. Let's say I'll only go 40 meters, something like that. And I hit OK. All right. If I hit Start process, Processing, what it's going to do is just eliminate any points which are beyond 40 meters for each of the scans. So what I'll do is I'll start processing that right now, and then I'll hit Pause, and then I'll come back once it's complete. Okay, so the processing is finished here. And you can see from the processing results, everything is successful. I'm going to hit OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this, go back to my Explore tab, and open the um, results here. Now you'll see that I don't have the points which are very, very far away, okay? All the way sort of on the end here. Those have been uh, filtered out. Now, I could have made this a lot smaller and made it 10 meters, but uh, I've kept some, um, some additional points here just for demonstration. Um, so I've shown uh, you know, how we can delete points, I've shown how we can filter points, and finally I'm going to show how we can use the clipping box. So the clipping box has a few options in, in the way that you can create it, but I'm just going to show you the auto clipping box here. Now, the auto clipping box okay, is created based on the relative size of the scan. So if I move this way, way out like this, the clipping box will be fairly large relative to the scan. But if I move in just to this corner, Okay, the clipping box will be 
about the size of what I need. So I'm going to go like this and I click auto clipping box. Okay. And you can see here it is uh, right there. Now I'm going to have to rearrange this and there's a little menu that comes up here. So I'm going to stretch this out a bit using these arrows. Okay. Like that. And like this. Now I'm going to need to rotate it so you can see I'm not lined up. Okay, with the garage here, so I'm going to rotate this around just so that the lines get more or less aligned. Something like this. I'm going to rotate. So you can see the box is much bigger than the ceiling and such. So let's say I don't need the ceiling. I want to drop the ceiling, maybe something. Well, I've got some piping and that sort of thing. But let's say, oh, I don't know. I want to do something like this. Well, maybe I'll go a little bit lower. Okay. Something about this size. And, you know, I've got the box coming out here. If I want to shorten this up a bit, I could do something like that. But eh, I'll leave it where it was. It's, it's still kind of interesting. There's, there's a door over here as well that I'll capture. And we'll keep up, up to there. So using the clipping box, um, if I make a selection right now, so if I just hit Control A, and that's just to select all, it selects everything that's in the clip box. Now that I've got everything selected there, I can just right-click, Selection, and I can export the points. Another way to do this, I hit Control D to get rid of my selection, is hit the Control, uh, sorry, hit the clipping box. I'll right click, and you'll see Active Clipping Boxes. Okay, Export 3D Selection. So um, this is another way to do it. Uh, I have a habit of just hitting Control A, so I can see my selection here, and uh, I'm just going to right click, go Selection, Export Points. Now. In terms of what to export as, um, I found that E57 okay, or PTS will work fairly well. So in this case, I'm going to use E57 uh, simply because it's a compressed format. It will take up a little bit less room. And I'm just going to do this on my desktop. And I'm going to call this Garage and good enough. I'm going to hit OK, Export. And we'll let that uh, export. And what I'm going to do right after this is go into Ferrozone 3D and show you uh, how we can bring in the data and some of the manipulation that we can do as well. Okay, so we've switched over to Ferrozone 3D and I'm going to create a new project here. So I'm just in the main uh, interface here. Now, um, one thing you need to check before you start importing is to ensure that your export units and your import units are the same. Now, I typically use meters and I can check that if I go to uh, scene here and I go to the settings. There's a, there's a section here for export, and I'm going to click on that, and you'll see that I've got meter sets. And this is um, the units that the scan is going to be exported as. So that means, I'll just close this, I don't need it anymore. When I go back to Ferro Zone, uh, I am set to meters, okay? So I should be okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the Point Cloud tab. And um, you can also bring in a project point cloud from scene, but we're going to be doing uh, E57. So we have to use this second tab here where it says import other point clouds. And I'm going to go to the desktop and you'll see I have garage E57 selected. So as soon as you bring this in, what it's going to do is convert the scan over to the Ferro zone format. And that's why you can display it inside the uh, viewport. Now, um, Regardless if you have PTS or whatever, it's always going to do the conversion, except for when you have a scene project, and that's currently the way that it's uh, set up. So what I have here, you'll see, is a point cloud, okay, that I, the garage point cloud, but you'll notice that I have got it way, way above the, uh, the 0, 0, 0 point. So I'm going to do a couple things to set this back in place, okay? Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get in close here. And I'll probably go to the corner, like something like this, okay? And I'm going to set this corner um, at about the zero point, okay, the zero, zero, zero. So right now it's, it's floating very, very high. So I'm going to go to this, this one here. It says Cloud Tools. Click on that. And here you can make some adjustments to the point cloud. So if you want gap fill on, uh, if you want to make the point sizes larger and things like that, you can do that. You can even turn on grayscale, okay, and shut it off. I'm going to leave it on color. But at the very bottom here, it says Cloud Positioning Tools. So I'm going to click on that. And we have some different options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, um, let's say, well, there's two, two options here. Elevate to Pick Point, the Z only. If I click this point here, it's going to drop this whole point cloud, uh, at least the base, down to the zero level. Okay. 
Or what I could do is center to pick point, so X, Y, Z. If I click this point, then this point here will be my um, X, Y, and Z. Or what I can do is center to pick point. If I click this point here, uh, it will then become the 0, 0, 0. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to move somewhere in here like that. I'm just going to click there, and you'll see that everything has bounced down to the 0, 0 level, and the corner right is right there where I want where I was expecting it now other things that I can do is I can rotate this right so here it's got yaw pitch roll so let's say for example I want to yaw I want to start rotating this I want to square this up I can do this okay like that so now it's more square um, you can start moving this in X and Y okay if you want to uh, line it up in a very specific fashion so let's say I want to go down here like that um, yeah, or you can, uh, you know, have it oriented in the manner in which you want. So um, these are the basic tools that can be used to align these point clouds here in Faro Zone and uh, also to filter and clean up the point clouds before you bring them in. And that's it. Thank you.